The rain fell in heavy sheets outside, casting a dreary haze over the usually glamorous exterior of the Velvet Moon, a five-star hotel known for catering to the elite. Inside the opulent lobby, the bustling activity continued as guests arrived and departed, attended to by the ever-efficient staff. Mr. Watson, the hotel's concierge, prided himself on maintaining the highest standards. His sharp eyes scanned the check-in register, and he barked orders at anyone he deemed too slow or careless. Carla, I told you to shine this floor. It's smudged again, Mr. Watson called out, glaring at the janitor. But sir, I just mocked the reception area, Carla protested. I don't care. Do it again, or I'll see to it that the manager hears about your lack of effort. This hotel must always be spotless. Mr. Watson twirled his mustache with an air of superiority, believing that every detail, no matter how small, contributed to the hotel's prestige. As Carla scrambled to obey, the grand double doors of the hotel lobby creaked open, allowing in a man who looked out of place amidst the luxury. He was drenched from head to toe, his shabby clothes clinging to his thin frame. His hair was disheveled, and an unpleasant odor clung to him. Excuse me, ma'am, the man approached the receptionist, his voice tired and hoarse. Can I get a room for the night? The receptionist's expression twisted into one of disgust as she leaned back, recoiling from the smell. Before she could respond, Mr. Watson, who had overheard the exchange, stepped in. Is there a problem here? Mr. Watson asked, though his tone suggested he already knew what was wrong. He eyed the bedraggled man with contempt, wrinkling his nose. Sir, I need a room. I missed the last bus, and it's pouring out there, the man explained, his voice pleading. Mr. Watson took a step closer and immediately regretted it. Good heavens! What is that stench? Are you serious? This is a five-star establishment, not some roadside inn for drifters. Look at you! You should consider a visit to a public restroom before even thinking of setting foot in here again, you reek. The man stood there, defeated yet determined. Please, I'm willing to pay. I just need shelter for the night. I don't care how much you're willing to pay. This hotel has standards, and you clearly don't meet them. Out. Mr. Watson pointed toward the door, his voice dripping with disdain. Go find yourself a cheap motel. This is not a place for people like you. The man's face flushed with humiliation, but there was nothing more he could say. He turned around, lifting his old suitcase, and walked back out into the rain. Mr. Watson watched him leave with a smirk of satisfaction. Disgusting, he muttered under his breath. Carla, mop that area again. He's probably left some filthy trail behind him. Half an hour later, to Mr. Watson's utter surprise, the same man walked back through the lobby doors. This time, he was clean and wearing a modest but neat suit. He had clearly taken a shower and made an effort to look presentable. Sir, the man approached Mr. Watson again, his voice steady but firm. I've cleaned up and I'm still willing to pay for a room. Can I stay here now? Mr. Watson eyed him up and down, his lips curling into a sneer. Oh, you cleaned up, did you? And that cheap cologne you're wearing is supposed to change everything. You should have done this before walking in here stinking like garbage. But fine, I'll allow you to stay. He grabbed the check-in register, filled in the man's details with a flourish, and then handed him a room key. Room 206. Enjoy your stay, he said mockingly, adding, though I doubt you'll find much comfort here for the price you're paying. The man, whose name was Jacob, nodded politely and took the key. He was tired, cold, and wanted nothing more than to rest. But when he entered his assigned room, his hope for a peaceful night evaporated. The room was far below the standard of the hotel's reputation. The bed was basic, the air conditioning was broken, and the bathroom was in disrepair. The shower had dangled from the wall, and there was no hot water. Exhausted but unwilling to settle for this treatment, Jacob called room service. Hi, this is Jacob from room 206. The AC isn't working, and there's no hot water. Can someone come fix this? The attendant on the other end assured him that someone would be sent up immediately. 
but an hour passed and no one arrived. Frustrated, Jacob went back downstairs to speak with Mr. Watson. Sir, Jacob began, trying to keep his temper in check. I reported issues with my room over an hour ago, but nobody has come to fix them. Mr. Watson barely glanced up from his phone. I'm sorry, but we're short-staffed right now, you'll just have to deal with it. But I'm paying for a room that should come with functioning amenities. Surely there's someone who can help. You get what you pay for, sir. This isn't some luxury suite, you know, Mr. Watson replied with a smirk. Now if you'll excuse me, I have more important matters to attend to. Fuming, Jacob stormed back to his room. Later, he decided to head down to the hotel restaurant to get something to eat. He chose a quiet table by the window, hoping for a peaceful meal, but Mr. Watson appeared almost immediately. What are you doing here? Mr. Watson hissed. This area is reserved for our esteemed guests. Jacob frowned. I'm a guest, aren't I? Not the kind that belongs here. We have a different seating area for you, over there. Mr. Watson gestured toward a dark, cramped corner of the dining hall, far from the windows and the main dining area. Go on, move. This is ridiculous, Jacob muttered, but he had no choice. He picked up his things and moved to the designated area, feeling utterly disrespected. After his meal, Jacob couldn't hold back any longer. He approached one of the waiters. Hey, I'm Jacob, he introduced himself. I just wanted to ask, what's it like working here? The waiter hesitated, glancing nervously around before speaking in a low voice. Honestly, the hotel is great, but Mr. Watson, he makes our lives miserable. He acts like he owns the place, even though he's just a concierge. We're all afraid of him. Jacob nodded, his suspicions confirmed. Thanks for telling me. And don't worry, I won't say anything to him. As the waiter hurried away, Jacob saw Mr. Watson berating an elderly woman and her grandchildren at a nearby table. She had asked for help escorting her grandson to the restroom, but Mr. Watson had refused, snapping at her instead. Not my job, lady, Mr. Watson said coldly. Jacob had seen enough. He marched over to Mr. Watson. That's enough, Mr. Watson, you can't treat people like this. Mr. Watson turned on Jacob, his eyes blazing with anger. Who do you think you are, telling me how to do my job? You'll find out soon enough, Jacob replied, his voice calm but firm. Follow me. Sensing something was off, Mr. Watson followed Jacob back to the reception area. Wait a minute, Mr. Watson said, suddenly suspicious. You're from that rival hotel, aren't you? You're here to spy on us, to sabotage our reputation. Jacob shook his head, a faint smile playing on his lips. No, Mr. Watson, I'm not a spy, but I think you'll want to answer that call. He pointed to the landline, which was ringing insistently at the reception desk. The receptionist handed the phone to Mr. Watson. His face paled as he listened to the voice on the other end. The CEO, he stammered, his eyes darting to Jacob. He hung up the phone, his hands trembling. You're the, the new CEO. Mr. Watson stuttered, his face flushed with embarrassment. That's right, Jacob said, his tone firm. And I've seen enough. Your behavior is unacceptable. And it's not what this hotel stands for. My father built this place on the principles of respect and hospitality, and you've violated everything we stand for. I'm... I'm so sorry, Mr. Felix, Mr. Watson stammered, realizing his mistake. I didn't know who you were. Please give me another chance. It won't happen again. Jacob shook his head. I don't think so. You're fired, Mr. Watson. I won't tolerate someone who treats our guests and our staff this way. As Mr. Watson's pleas fell on deaf ears, Jacob turned to the receptionist. Please see to it that Mr. Watson's severance is processed by morning. We're making changes around here, starting with him. And so, from that day on, the Velvet Moon became a place where all guests were treated with dignity and respect, regardless of their appearance or background, with Jacob Felix leading the way as its new CEO.